windy Derbyshire day. Today to talk about this. So, are these any good and is it worth a second hand buy? Well, before we get into that, we'll have a quick look around the outside of the car uh, and then have a bit of a play before we go for a drive. So as this is based on the Fiesta, you'll see many traits from the Fiesta, such as the circular fog lights here on this model, although on the latest newer 2018-19 version, that is now a, a triangle. Uh, and you've got the standard grille there as well, which comes now with most Fords. It's not a particularly ugly car, it's not displeasing, it's not as ugly as something like the Duke, and it's not as plain as, say, the Jeep Renegade, which has a couple of styling quirks, but just generally, in my opinion, kind of fail. From the back, again, you've got more of a Fiesta look, uh, just sort of stretched out a little bit. You're going to have to ignore the dint on this one. It was supposed to be fixed before this was purchased, but sadly, because of the COVID situation, the body shop is currently closed. And then around the other side, you've obviously got your fuel filler cap, and obviously it's just basically the same there. Obviously, as you can see, it's obviously got a much higher ride height than the Fiesta. But overall, I think it's got quite nice styling to it. It's not a particularly ugly car. Like I say, it's uh, far better looking than something like the Duke, which has got to be the ugliest car ever made. Now, it comes with a number of engine options. Uh, the one litre EKB, which is probably the best one of the bunch. The 1.5 turbo diesel, but obviously diesels are becoming more and more unpopular. And then this one, which is the 1.5 litre Duratec as well. Uh, which isn't a bad engine either. I mean, Ford's, most of Ford, Ford's engines are fairly good anyway. So we'll have pop the bonnet and have a quick look at what it looks like. Now, here under the engine bay, we have the 1.5 litre. It isn't much to look at, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of room still in the bay, which means they probably could actually, if they wanted to, put a bigger engine in this. But speed isn't really what this car is all about. Now I've never been much of a fan of a crossover because they don't give you the versatility of in state and most of them like this one is a four wheel drive so you're not getting the benefit of four wheel drive. But I am coming around to seeing more of the appeal to them uh, as the owner of this one is a shorter person and doesn't like that high of driving position and it certainly gives you that. So we'll look at that in a bit. Now around the back here you've got your tailgate which opens with an electronic button just under here. It is a sliding door, so it does open this way. You get obviously your little cover there. The boot is bigger than the Fiesta, it's not huge. Um, probably things on the Duke are, uh, things like the Duke are slightly bigger, but it's certainly big enough for you to uh, get everything in. And you can fold the seats all the way forward against the front seats as well to create extra space. Um, now, the spare wheel on these vehicles is an optional extra. Uh, and it's normally bolted to this door. What you get as standard is just under this flap here. And what you get is your locking wheel nut key, some slime to put into the tyre, and uh, there's your towing eye, and obviously you get your compressor there to reinflate the tyre once you've uh, got the slime connected up. So, yeah, um, standard feature now for most cars. A lot of manufacturers aren't giving spare tyres now. Um, you know, the space saver thing was a thing, but now that's been moved with the, uh, gone, gone the way of the dodo really pretty much a lot as well, and you get the slime bottles now. Now, as we open the side door here in the back, it's pretty easy to get in and out. And I'm six foot, and this is my driving position, and I can comfortably sit behind myself. So the back green space is certainly not an issue within this vehicle. And even when this was parked next to cars with the dealership when we went to look at it and you only had this space, although it's a bit harder, you can still get in that space as well. And that's because there's so much leg room here behind the, uh, the driver or passenger seat. So, although the door doesn't open completely wide, um, space-wise, I don't really think is a, is a huge problem here in the back of the now down here for your passenger comfort you do have a 12 volt socket for your rear passengers and then here's your strap for adjusting the seats which I will now hopefully try and demonstrate. Now I'm not going to fold the seats all the way forward just because 
I need to put them back again. But basically, you just give it a pull on this strap, and you can move them to an almost upright position if you want to give yourself a bit more luggage space. Now, in that, it's not going to be quite as comfortable for your passenger, but you can still do a reasonable journey in that position. Give it another pull, and it falls all the way forward. And then another pull from the one in the back. There's another one here. And as you can see, if you do fold all of the seats back, although it's not a perfectly straight luggage compartment, there is plenty, plenty of space in there. Now again, here in the driving position, everything is fairly comfortable. Everything is in easy reach. The car has a host of safety features, some of which we'll go through in a minute. Obviously, your standard seat belts and everything else like that, as, long as, uh, as well as your airbags. Uh, you've got your side airbags, you've got your steering wheel airbag, and you actually have an airbag down here as well for your knees in the event of an accident. So, it's all pretty well thought out, and safety is certainly a key feature of the vehicle. The only slight issue is, every so often this large A-pillar here will get in your way. And there's a particular turn on the drive back down from my house where, if you can see the quite large rear A-pillar, that does cause an obstruction. But most of the time, the vision is fine, even though the back window is a little bit small. The vision, you know, sort of around the car is, is, is fairly reasonable, it is fairly good. Now, you do have, on this vehicle, electric front and rear windows. You have your electric mirror switch down there you have your lights fog lights down here as well and obviously with vehicles that are fitted with the auto lights you have that down here as well this vehicle doesn't have that feature you have the standard fiesta steering wheel with your stereo and phone controls there so you can connect your phone to the stereo um, as well so you obviously can be hands-free there's plenty of storage, you've got good sized door pockets, you've got your coin, coin tray down here, you have more storage down here, and you have sort of a coin slash pen mat here, which has got EcoBoost there stamped in it, you probably can't see that. Again, down here, under the passenger chair, there's also a, oops, I've just pulled that out completely, a storage tray. Let's just pop that back in. There we go. Uh, so yeah, you have a storage tray there, and you've got a reasonable size glove box for the size of the vehicle. Now, as with most cars, you do have this annoying have to put your foot on the clutch to start it, which is just seems to be a standard thing nowadays. So now I've got the up and running. The instrument display is good and clear. You have your trip computer there, and if you can see, I'm scrolling through that. So that's got all of your information, your temperature and everything else. Down here we have heated seats with two settings on, as you can see there. I'll turn the wipers on, let me just turn those off. Uh, the car does have auto wipers as well. You've obviously got full climate control here as well. You've, of course, as with most forts, got the heated windscreen, uh, which also obviously puts it into that mode. Um, for ease of use, really, just for me, put it on auto and set whichever temperature you want, and it works perfectly fine. The vehicle itself has been really economical. It came back from Manchester the other day and hardly used any fuel at all. Um, and it's been driven a little bit over the last couple of days. And again, the fuel level has uh, not really gone down too much. Now, this brings us to the stereo here. So let me just turn this down now again with the stereo you've got your phone settings you've got obviously your radio and CD settings and then you've got the settings for the whole of the vehicle so let me just get close up to that so you can see it so this has Ford sync system so obviously you can put your phone on there one of the key features of this as well it has Ford's emergency assist which means if it senses you are in an accident and there's been an airbag deployment even if you are incapable of actually calling the car will through your phone if you've obviously linked it to the system, call the emergency services on your behalf and give them your GPS location as well. 
So as we go down, uh, we can go into and have a look in vehicle settings. We also have their traction control. You have your tire monitor. Um, tire pushes are okay, so that's good. So if we just go back out of that, you've got hill um, start assist as well, and then you've got the settings for the alarm system and other bits and pieces. So. It's very comprehensive. There's definitely a lot of safety features and driver aids within the vehicle, including, if I can just, let me just pop it in reverse. You've got your driver sensor there as well. And as you can see, you've got the little blocks at the back there, and obviously that helps tell you where and how close you are getting to things as you are parking it. Now, it is based on a Fiesta, like I say, but it is, you know, it does feel a much bigger car. Uh, especially when driving it, you know, you don't feel as enclosed as you would do in a Fiesta. So from that respect, you know, they've done a really good job in, you know, making it not feel sort of Fiesta-like in the way it drives. A bit of a tour of the car, we've had an overlook, but obviously the bigger question is how does it drive? Because that is obviously the main reason you're going to buy the vehicle. Um, so let's just have a quick recap first. Um, the exterior, we like the exterior, it, you know, it, it is, it's well designed, it's not a bad looking car, like I say, the Duke is, well, yeah, let's not even go there, I mean, I suppose the good thing is if you did buy a Duke, you wouldn't have to have a look at the outside. Uh, other competitors in the market, there are some from obviously Citroen and Persia, I don't really know much about those, so I'm not going to comment on those at the moment. You've got the Jeep Renegade, which is based on the Fiat 500X, which I don't think has as much room in the back. And I'm not over keen on the styling. I think this looks better. And you do pay a premium for the Jeep badge as well. Um, and I think when really, if you just peel it back, it's just a Fiat 500X. It's made in a Fiat factory. It's got a Fiat engine. You know, you're basically paying because they bolted a Jeep badge to it. I think the driving position in this is nice. You do get this, you probably can't see that, but there is a little armrest here as well on the driver's seat. You have um, one touch electric window there on the driver's side. You've got the rear window lock so you can stop kids playing from the back. You've got your sunroof, um, sunroof, your glasses uh, case there, obviously. So if you do wear glasses or sunglasses, whatever, you know, you've got somewhere to, to put those. Um, safety features, obviously, we've, again, we've covered that. You know, the car has a whole host of driver aids and safety features to keep you safe. And in the event that you do have an accident, it's then going to call the emergency services for you. I mean, it, it, it's really good. You know, and like I say, I, I was never really sold on the idea of crossovers, but I am definitely coming around to liking this car. Now I have to apologise for the camera shake, but due to the equipment that I have available to me, there is going to be some. But we are at least off on the road. Now obviously I've turned the stereo down, so you can hear me. Ooh, Mr Land Rover coming around the bend there a little bit quickly. But he is bigger than us, so. I mean, that's the thing about this car, it's never going to be a Land Rover. But that's, again, not what it's designed to be. You know, it's designed to be a city crossover really, more than anything else, which is where most of these cars are going to spend their life. This one is going to spend its life in the countryside because that's where the owner lives. Um, but overall, it's it's not a bad old uh, little motor. I mean, if you are thinking of having one of these, the later one that you can buy, the better. Um, the earlier ones, I think, weren't quite as good. Sorry about the camera shake. Uh, I mean, prices start from around six and a half grand for an early one. I would say if you can go for a sort of 2016, 2017 model, that's going to set you back around the eight to uh, just over nine thousand. Um, this this particular vehicle was just over nine thousand pounds. One owner, full four service history, fourteen thousand miles on the clock. And I don't think for a seventeen plate car that's too bad. Well. It's the second half of 17, so it's a 67, I think. I've just been looking at the registration as well, and I still can't tell you. The one thing that um, you do notice about this car from the moment you start driving it is how smooth and light everything is. It's, you know, everything in it, the way it operates, is completely smooth. And it's just, 
it's just a really nice thick car to drive. I mean, you don't you get a lot of feeling in that through the steering wheel. You're not going to suddenly go throwing it into corners. But let's face it, that's not what you're buying this car for. It's not a sports car. It's never going to be a sports car. And even though Ford do do uh, an S-Line version of this, it may have a little bit more power, but it's not going to be a sports car for start. It sits too high. But the overall driving experience is actually really, really nice. And there's my brake assist, my, my hill start assist working. So we put that to the test there. I just kept my foot on the brake. The car realizes it's on a hill um, through obviously the whatever sensors it's got on it and applies the brakes for a little bit longer for you once you've removed your foot and then you can pull off without rolling back. So that's a really nice feature. Not one that you may necessarily need. I mean, it's, it's not something that I feel I would need, but again, you never know. Obviously, you know, nobody is a perfect driver. That does not exist. On the road, although there is a little bit of wind noise because obviously it is a higher vehicle and you've got the, uh, the side boost bars on there. There's a styling tweet. Even if you sort of put your foot down on a, you know, a 60 mile an hour limit now, you know, the engine is, is very quiet, it's all very smooth, it's all very, well, agreeable. And the one thing about this, and the one thing I did notice, because I'm the one that picked it up from Manchester for the owner, is because it is so quiet, even at high speeds, you can quite quickly not realise how fast you're going. There were a couple of moments where I looked down and thought, oh, I'm going a little bit too fast and I did obviously just slow it down a little bit so you know you do have to keep an eye on your speed because it is just that smooth and that quiet it just it's just a nice car to drive you know and I think that's the thing though uh, and why I would probably have one of these over some of its rivals is you know is the fact that it is a Ford at the end of the day and you know they are fairly solid and reliable cars. You know, they're, you know, Ford are the highest selling, you know, company going, I think, pretty much at the moment and have been for a very long time. So, they're obviously doing something correctly. I mean, there's a Cougar, slightly bigger one. I think that one's based on the Focus. But, I think, and I think, would I buy a Cougar? I'd probably have one of these over it because you're going to pay more money for the Cougar for a little bit extra space, but unless you really, really need it, I don't see the point. You know, if you're going to sort of look, start looking to spend serious money, buy an Edge. That way, you're going to get the four-wheel drive and the bigger car. Oh look, a Duke. Man, that's an ugly fucking car. Ooh, shouldn't say that. That's an ugly car. <laughs> so here we are on the biting point on the clutch off we pull nice and easy Every, everything is just where you expect it to be on this car the biting point is where it is the steering is light the gear change is light everything just works well but again you would expect it to it is basically a fiesta underneath okay it you know it's been to the gym it's a little bit more good uh you know it's not certainly not an aggressive car but oh i'm it convertible nice little like thing um you know it, it is just a pleasant place to be i think i know i keep sort of repeating sort of the same thing but you know there, there isn't sort of a great deal that you can say about it but there's nothing really bad to say about it it does everything as you would expect i wouldn't say necessarily it's an average car i would say it's probably a bit better than that but, I mean, here we are now. You'll get a bit more camera shake, because although you, you don't notice there's a driver sitting in the seat, you can't really feel it. This is quite a bumpy road. I brought it down here sort of on purpose. Now you can see that clearly there are bumps, but you don't really feel it that much as the driver. So, again, in that way, they've obviously done some work on the suspension and thing. And here comes the rain. Delightful. I'm glad we got our exterior shots done sooner. But here we go. It is, like I say, just a pleasant car. Would I buy one? Yes. Would I buy one new? Maybe not, because they are quite pricey. I mean, I had a look at putting one, building one, 
yesterday for myself on the Ford website. I went for the ST line black edition with the orange roof and all the features and that that I would want on it. And it was about twenty-four and a half thousand pounds, which you know, if I was probably in the market and it was gonna be a car I was gonna keep for a while, would be worth it. But for my mind, I'd probably prefer to spend sort of nine, ten thousand, get a nice second hand one like this, and uh, you know, that would do me. I mean, when um, when this one was purchased, there was another one, a very similar spec, black one. That was a one litre eco boost, it had half leather seats, it had the uh, keyless start on it, um, and it had cruise control. Now, personally, that's probably the one that I would have picked. Uh, had I got nine grand and I wanted something um, that was perhaps somewhat more practical than my MG, I'd probably go and buy that if I had the money now. Having driven this one, uh, you know, I, I, it would be a car that I would actually happily go out and buy. Um, I probably wouldn't, like I say, wouldn't buy a brand new one, but I'd definitely buy a second hand one. Um, other nice touches, you do get this nice. Um, sort of leather steering wheel in it as well, which just gives it that bit more of a quality feel. Not all of the plastics in here are particularly like splendid, but you know it's a Ford. You you know you want better quality, you're gonna have to spend better money. It's as simple as that. You want Mercedes Benz quality, you're gonna have to buy a Mercedes Benz. We're now still behind two cyclists, which is rather annoying. Kind of puts a damner on my test. <laughs> but. Um, visibility wise as well from the wing mirrors and everything, it's got massive wing mirrors um, and again they are, uh, they get plenty of visibility. Now I can just see behind us, there is yet another crossover, uh, the Vauxhall Mocha. Now those I just think are ugly little cars, you know, it's not the fact that they're like, like Duke ugly where the styling just makes you go, <laughs> but they just look dull. And boring and I think because as well I I'm pretty sure it's probably based on the Corsa like this is based on the Fiesta I know Corsa seats are awful um, give you proper backing um, so again I'd have the Ford all day long over over the three that obviously I've mentioned the Jeep the, the Vauxhall I forgot what the other one I mentioned was seriously what are you doing Cyclists, idiots. Um, yeah, over the the Jeep, the the Vauxhall. I'm sure there was one more, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was now. My memory is terrible. Anyway, I'm nearly back in now to my finishing point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over, switch the camera around, so you can have a sort of a a car view central in the bonnet um, but it'll give you an idea obviously I'm afraid you're gonna see the wipers because well they are much needed Test drive of the Ford Echo Sport. 
Would we recommend it? Yes, definitely we would. Um, would I buy one? Yeah, I think I would. I would buy one. Um, out of 10, I'd probably give it an 8. Um, overall, it's a good car. It does everything it's supposed to. Um, it's quiet. Um, why would I not give it 10 out of 10? Well, there's just a couple of little things. Obviously, there's the whole, you know, spare wheel thing. If you do have one, it does have to be mounted on the, the rear of the boot. Some of the A-pillars in certain situations are going to cause you a problem. So, although the visibility is very good, it could be better just on those couple of little occasions where you may have a bit of an awkward turn. Um, but overall, it's a good car. Stay tuned. Um, hopefully there'll be some more of these coming in the future. Uh, it's just a look at it with all its lights on. So I'm back home now. One of the things I did forget to say in the review, obviously with the uh, with the vehicle, the tailgate is a, a side opening one. Now I can see see that how some people may not sort of, uh, what's going on with my hair? I <laughs> may not like that. Um, it does take up slightly more room than one that opens upwards, although, you know, there still has to be a degree of space for that to open upwards anyway. Uh, but obviously the benefits of the, the one that's open to the side is if, you know, you are like the owner, a little bit on the shorter side, much easier for you to close and everything else. Um, the previous vehicle that that person had, had the same style tailgate. I mean, never really a problem. Provided, obviously, you know, you think about what you're doing, there really, it, you know, shouldn't be an issue with that either. Jet plane headed up to the sky, spread wings in a